space coconut. Well, how about those uh, disconnecting penalties? Hmm? Hmm? Are they preventing uh, DCs on your end? <laughs> oh, what a joke. Before I get into today's video, I'd like to encourage you to like, share, subscribe, comment below, do all of the things that the YouTube algorithm likes to feed on to help the channel out. I stream every Saturday, so if you want to check me out there, uh, the link to my Mixer channel is down below. I do stream other times during the week, but it's pretty sporadic depending on my work schedule. So if you want to know when any of those random streams come on, follow me on Twitter and you'll know about them ahead of time. A year ago, I made a video talking about the DC epidemic. Several other streamers had done a podcast talking about the topic. Some were in favor of um, disconnecting and others were uh, against it and they were talking about a penalty for that. Uh, if you're interested in that video, I'll put a link to that below. But now we have a disconnecting penalty and the husks that the devs had mentioned before are still nowhere to be seen. But somehow Dead by Daylight Mobile was able to implement bots into the mobile version of the game. Now I don't know the details of that and I don't have a version of it and I'm not really into Dead by Daylight Mobile. But if the mobile version can implement bots, things that you can interact with even if a survivor disconnects, why hasn't it been implemented into the main game? I'd be curious to hear why. Regardless, the DC time penalty for each DC is like this. Uh, Peanut Butter, Peanuts Butter, uh, posted this in the forums and I'm not sure how accurate it is, but we'll see. Uh, it lists first, second, and up to third, seventh time, sorry. Uh, so it goes five minutes. Uh, this, I'm just going to list this per DC, right? Five minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Now, he doesn't go any further than that, but we can assume that the pattern repeats. Um, not sure what the max amount of time is. Um, there might be another post somewhere about like the maximum amount of time or if that's accurate or not. But the problem is that a time ban isn't going to solve the problem. People are DCing because the game pisses them off. Because mechanics and things that people can do pisses people off. The game is designed to be difficult. I'm using finger quotes when I say difficult, but it comes off as frustrating and it's deliberately frustrating for both sides, depending on the type of player you come up against. The problem with doing it with a time, okay, we're not even going to talk about the problems with it because I've made videos about that before, but here's what we're looking at. We have, we have DC bands now and, and if a survivor feels the need to DC, they're going to DC. A, a, a penalty timer of like five minutes, they're going to go, they're going to get a drink. They're not going to, you know, worry about this penalty because by the time they come back, the problem player they were playing against is long gone and the odds of them ma being matched up with them again is very low. This player, as they go on, if they come into another situation like that, they're going to play the game. They're going to get into the frustrating situation and DC anyway, regardless if they really, really don't want to play in the situation, right? Those people are the people who will get so fed up with the game that they're going to let it go. They're going to drop it. They're going to take their break, their six hour, three hour break or whatever, and then decide not to come back to Dead by Daylight, right? Because it's that frustrating and they can't DC because of it. And, you know, for in my opinion, good riddance, good riddance to those people. But the others are the ones who want to keep playing Dead by Daylight, but don't want to be in the matches that they're in. And we all know what they do now. And that's kill themselves on the hook. Now, I tried to be as toxic as I could in a couple of matches and tried to get people to die on the hook, and, you know, it didn't really happen. So maybe it's going to be about as rare as DCing was in the past. I can't make people... <laughs> well, technically, I can't get peop uh, survivors to DC when I want them to. It's just if I make it frustrating enough or whatever. But <sighs> the DC ban, the DC penalty system isn't going to work because the survivors are just going to kill themselves on the hook and everybody knows this except for the devs. It's it's very frustrating. It's very it's it's kind of strange how the devs can go through with something even with even though we've talked about the feedback and the consequences of doing it their, the way they're planning. They do it anyway. They don't listen. They don't listen to us. They think their way is best, you know. I'm just ranting at this point. I don't have a solution. The devs aren't going to listen to me. The devs aren't going to listen to us. They're not going to listen to anybody except the person who plays their checks. Whoever 
told them to implement this system or to get more people to play, blah, 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 blah. It's a business and it's about money and that's fine. But we should stop thinking or stop imagining that they actually care about us as players. Anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. What we're going to end up seeing now, and everybody knows it, is survivors dying on the hooks. Period. If they don't want to be in the match, they're going to give themselves to the killer. They're... Worst case scenario, they DC anyway, right? They take on that that tiny little ban. If the ban, if the timer starts getting out of hand, then they're going to start dying on the hook on purpose. They'll feed themselves to the killer, get onto the hook, and then just, you know, struggle away. If they're unlucky enough to Kobe, they'll just go and do it again so they can get out of the match. I really don't think there's a solution to this problem because this is a symptom of something deeper in the game. Everybody knows it and the devs are ignoring it. The core problems of the game piss people off so much that they want to abandon a match. They don't want to follow through. They don't want to at least get to the end and, and that sort of thing. They just abandon it. They don't, yeah, for whatever reason. And until the devs actually focus on the core of the game, fix the majority, fix the majority of the big problems in the game, and people will, ha will be less inclined. Well, and players will have less frustrating matches. Matches that are actually fun to play through, even if they're losing. That's where the problem comes in. Because if a player isn't having fun in a match, they're going to have no problem disconnecting. They're going to have no problem eating the penalty or dying on the hook. They just want out. If a player is kind of having fun or they think they could come back or they can do something in the match, then they're going to they're going to hold on. They're going to stick to the match and they're going to see if they can't play it out because they're having fun. If the game isn't fun, they're going to leave. And that's where the problem is. There are all of these mechanics in the game that cause players to quit, but there's hardly any mechanics in the game to other than blood points really blood points is the only thing to incentivize them to continue with the match there's nothing and that's that's something that i'm discovering after playing uh, escape from tarkov there are times where i bore I, I i go through a map and i'm not finding everybody i'm missing fights and things like that and i'm not sure how to track people and it sucks i suck and I kind of want to leave and try again from the beginning, but I don't because if I leave, I lose all my stuff. There's a chance I can come across a, uh, a downed player and take their stuff, right? There's also the chance I can take out somebody else. There's that chance where I can come back in the game and I don't feel like it's hopeless. And that's where this, that's where Dead by Daylight has another problem. It's their core gameplay and i understand that tarkov and dead by daylight are very very different games and i can't directly compare the two but we can compare how they make us feel when we play during a match and dead by daylight is designed to be frustrating to players and the devs have said that themselves until the game becomes less frustrating to play survivors aren't players in general are going to keep disconnecting and they're going to keep letting themselves die on the hook. They're going to keep going AFK while the survivors finish the gens because the game is frustrating for both sides. Killer mostly, but for both sides. Anyway, that was my rant on the disconnecting thing. There's a lot there. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about this a little bit. I know I've been slacking on my Dead by Daylight videos and I apologize for that. I'm going to try and pick it up. This disconnecting topic was kind of a was a good place to start because this is going to be a good discussion in the meantime dog i think i'll play some tarkov